this example uh, with arrays, I'm going to try to implement uh, a method that returns the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Uh, this was inspired by this blog post up here. You can go check it out. Uh, so first, what is Pascal's triangle? Well, it looks like this. There's a one in the first row, and uh, the next row is a uh, one one. Those two are the first two rows are kind of given. Then the next row, all rows start with one. Then the next number is the sum of the two above it. So there's going to be two, and the last number is always one. So then 1, then this is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3, and then always end with 1. 1, 4, 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 3 is now 6. And this is 4, end with 1, one last row. 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10 again. 4 plus 1 is 5, and then end in 1. So there you go. And it keeps going, you know, uh, as far as you can. So what we need to do is, uh, given a number n, uh, we have to return the nth row. So let's just give this guy's number. We're going to say that's row 0. This is row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, and so on. And so how do I, uh, how do I generate the fifth row? So when I first started to look at it, you know, I started immediately thinking, well, can I generate the fifth row without generating all the previous rows? You know, so with my you know highly trained mind, <coughs> I uh, I started to try to think, okay, well, you know, there might be a pattern here. There might be some way of generating the fifth row without generating the other ones. Um, I thought about that for a little bit, and then I realized, I remembered, you know, I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not going to probably be able to figure that out, uh, if, you know, because I couldn't in the first five minutes. And I remember uh, my one of my rules of programming um, is uh, don't be clever. So uh, this is especially true in a test or, you know, in an interview question like this. Uh, and just in general, when you're trying to write programs, your first solution should be a simple one. So don't try to be clever from the get from the get-go first, you know, first you want to implement a brute force solution. And only after you have proven that that brute force solution is too slow or, you know, uses too much memory, whatever, uh, then, only then, do you try to be clever. So uh, what does brute force mean? That's something we use a lot. Um, and so brute force usually means for us either, you know, try all possible solutions so it's, uh, oftentimes it is pos possible to generate all possible solutions and then check it. Is this right? Is this right? So like trying all possible combinations to opening a, uh, a lock uh, or a safe, right? Uh, not, or other times, like in this case, it can mean, you know, use the problem definition uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, directly, right? So just, you know, just implement the problem as it is defined and don't try to be clever. So in this case, Pascal's triangle tells us, you know, the definition is that row number one is based exactly on the previous row, right? So row number four is based on row number three uh, and so on. So clearly we can get row n by first getting row n minus one, then row n, n minus two and so forth. So from that, you say like, well, if I need a row n, I'm going to have to generate, I have a for loop that generates first the first row, then the second from that, then the third from that, then the fourth from that, then the fifth from that. That is exactly what we're going to do. Um, so uh, public uh, is going to return an integer array and uh, nth Pascal row, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to call this, you know, the final row or, you uh, know, uh, it's called the row that, that we want. So that's the row that I want. Uh, return, so I'm going to return an array of integers. Uh, now, the, you know, the first two rows are kind of special, so I'm going to say if row equals to zero, then in the result is going to be just, no, row. So if you're asking me for row zero, then that's your result. Uh, and similarly, if you're asking me for row one, uh, 
then uh, that's going to be your result. Um, we might be able to, you know, fix these. Oops, I forgot the little brackets here. Might be able to, you know, merge this into the for loop later, but uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, so now we're going to need a for loop, right? That is going to go, we're going to have two rows, right? Um, so we're going to have, the. we'll, we'll call this uh, the, the previous row and the pre previous row, and we'll call this, you know, the uh, next row. And um, so, and then next time around, the next becomes previous and the next. So we're going to generate the next row from the previous row. So both of those are going to be integer arrays. So, and uh, we have a for loop in the go that is going to start at row two, right? Because we already did zero and one. So the first one we need to really generate is row two, and it's going to be based on row one. So for integer r, uh, I'm going to say r is 2, while r is less than or equal to row, right? Because we actually want to generate, if they ask me for row 5, I, I want to generate row 5, uh, and r plus plus, right? And now I need, I have my two arrays uh, in, of integers, so we could put those in here. Um, so, okay, well, I'm going to need my preview. The previous one should have been defined before. So I'm going to say int array previous is going to be 1-1, one, one, right? So the first time around, the first time around, I'm starting at row 2, so I want to generate row 2. That's going to be my next. And the previous one is 1-1. One, one. So that's the first time around. So then I need the uh, int array of next is going to be a new integer array and of length uh, r, right? Because uh, we're here at next, uh, and r is uh, now 2, and this guy has 0, 1, has 1, 2, 3 elements. So, oops, it's going to be actually r plus 1. Uh, so an array, a row two, I have to generate I need an array of three elements. A row three, I have an array of four elements, and so forth. And now I need to populate next. So for that, I'm going to need another for loop for integer. I'm just going with i. i is going to start with uh, what number? Well, first of all, the next, next zero is always one. So I'm going to put that there. So that means that it's going to start at one. And i is less than uh, r. And we already established that the length was uh, r. So like in row 2, I need to go from 0 and 1. So that means i less less than 2. And, uh, and then i plus plus. OK, now here is the tricky part. So if I want to set this number here, this is the sum of these guys. So we do the indices. So uh, next of zero, th this number here is next of two. So next bracket, I mean next bracket one. This is index one, and it's the sum of index zero and one of previous. So one is the sum of zero and one, and if you look at it, that's always the case, right? So like this guy, this three here is index zero one two. So the 3 is the index 2, and it's the sum of index 1 and 2 from the previous row. And this number 10 is index 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So index 3 is the sum of indexes 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 3 is the sum of 2 and 3. So in general, i, you can see you know, the pattern hopefully clearly now. The pattern is index i of this row is the sum of indexes i minus 1 and i of the previous row. Uh, so index i of this row, of the next row, is the sum of uh, previous i minus 1 and previous i. So that's going to go all the way to r, and then next of r is 1. Right? So the first number is 1, the last number is 1, 
and the ones in between are taken from previous. And uh, so these four lines set next, and then the last thing I said, uh, I'm just going to set previous is next. For the next time around the loop, previous is going to be next. And after we're all done with the loop, then I want to return, uh, well, both previous and next are the same. So uh, I'm going to return previous because that, that avoids, because uh, previous is in scope, next is only in scope within this loop. Um, so I, I don't have access to next over here. And I think this works, of course I have no idea. Um, so we have to test it. Let's test it. So we're, we're gonna need a int array. Our result is n Pascal. Pascal row of, uh, let's start with zero. Why is that now? Oh, I gotta make this static. Uh, there. So, and then, uh, well, if I do a printout of result, you remember, I'm just gonna get that. So I need a little for loop to actually print out the array so I can see if this is working. So for int r in result, I'm going to do a for each. I'm going to sys out uh, r. So print the number one. OK, that's fine. Uh, run that, run one. Uh, that's fine, but I actually wanted them in a line. So I want to do a print and then space. So one, one now comes. So those are the two base cases I had here. Um, so let's try with two, see what happens. That works. So it looks like it worked. One, two, one. Uh, I'm going to try with three. And one, three, three, one, which I believe is correct, right? Uh, one, three, three, one. And four. One, four, six, four, one. Um, so. If it works with the first four, it works for all of them, right? Um, so it looks like it's working. Um, so I think it's interesting um, to compare, if you compare this solution that I just did here using Java arrays to the one they do here, which is with Python, you'll see that you know the Python one is a lot shorter. And that is because they don't use arrays. Uh, and they don't have to keep track of indices. Uh, they use array lists and they can add stuff at the end. This is a lot more complicated and hard to get right than the Python solution. Uh, of course, we could have and we probably should have used an array list. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but I would probably recommend if you, if you have to do this uh, in your program, you, you might want to use an array list uh, of integers. Uh, largely because if you do that, it's going to look a lot more like the Python solution where uh, you can simply append. So once you declare an array list of integers, you can just append things to the end and you don't have to worry about creating a new array. Uh, uh, that is, the, you don't have to worry about getting the size right. Uh, and uh, And you can just append things at the end. You don't have to worry about this index either. That makes it a little bit simpler. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was, again, if you go back to this solution here, um, one of the, the, first, the first solution they propose is one that is uh, the, the very inefficient, and it uses a recursion to, recursion to calculate each number based on the two previous one. And uh, interestingly enough, I, I didn't think of that solution. I, don't think most people would think of that solution first. I think the solution I gave here is the one that most people would think of first because it sort of follows directly from the Pascal's definition, which is you know you generate one row, then you generate the next row, then you generate the next row based on that. And so we I think it's more intuitive, more obvious to think about generating a row based on the previous one. Uh, who knows? So there you go.